what you're going through or what you have been through. Thank God it's fabulous. I'm Welda Paley and I'm Fasia Hilton. Welcome. Thank God it's fabulous. Male nurses, vision, comfort, values, and beliefs. Thank God it's fabulous. What is cancer? What is your perception of cancer? Well, today our guest will be sharing her story on living with cancer. Thank God it's fabulous. Friendship. What is a true friend? He's my friend. She's my friend. Can a male and a female be true friends? What are the benefits of friendship? Are there true friends with benefits or not? How do you know somebody is a friend? What are the criteria? What are the requirements to have a friend? Thank God, Thank God. It's, it's fabulous. fabulous. Well, today we are going to be talking about career choices. Do you make career choices based on your habits or things you love or what's trending or what would be your livelihood? Is it going to be vocational or is it going to be higher education? What's your choice? you're going through or what you have been through thank god it's fabulous i'm welda paley and i'm fasia hilton welcome thank god it's fabulous male nurses vision comfort values and beliefs thank god it's fabulous what is cancer what is your perception of cancer? Well, today our guest will be sharing her story on living with cancer. Thank God it's fabulous. Friendship. What is a true friend? He's my friend. She's my friend. Can a male and a female be true friends? What are the benefits of friendship? Are there true friends with benefits or not? How do you know somebody is a friend? What are the criteria? What are the requirements to have a friend? Thank God, Thank God it's, it's fabulous. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Another day of Thank God is Fabulous. 
my co-host is going to be joining me shortly. So in a little bit, she will be here with me. But while I wait for her, we know today is the second part of a four-part series. Sex and God intention for sex. So let's do a quick recap of last week. Last week, we have Pastor Veronica Power and Pastor Esther Omweke, and they made a lot of clarifications to us. What we were at last week was to find out what is sex? What was God's intention for sex? And they broke it down to the letter. So our takeaway last week was sex is for pleasure and procreation. So knowing those two things in the back of our mind, let me go ahead and bring my co-host in, Ms. Vasia. Your mic is not on. Okay. But there we go. Yeah, there you go. So we're able to cut it down to the fun part and the procreation part. Today so is human understanding of that plan. So if the whole idea of it was for us to procreate the earth and for us to have fun while we do it, there are a lot of things now we want to ask about. Men who go around just having fun and procreating at the same time with more than one female, do they really understand the plan? Then we have some females who go around procreating and having the fun with more than one man. Do they understand the plan? Then we got some men Ooh. who sell it. They sell the sperm and people can go to the sperm bank, buy the sperm and then use it for in vitro. Do they understand the program? Is that fun? Is that procreation? Then we have some women who, because they are so fertile, they, 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 they procreate, they, they surrogate for other women who can't carry. So today we're going to find out a lot of things. Uh, do we really understand the plan? The plan is fun and procreation. But in all this shape and form, does it still align with God's intent? And today we have Pastor Veronica Powell, and Pastor Esther Amoike again, who's going to throw more light on this because they get to see the spiritual side when they are dealing with their congregations. People will come with so many different situations in the church that's stemming from this sex and their understanding of what sex is. So today, we're going to throw more light. Remember, this is a four-part series. So today, we're on the second part. Farsia? Yes. You know, this, this, this topic is a, I mean, it's a huge, huge topic. Yeah. And I'm glad that we are shedding a little bit of light on it. And we have two well knowledgeable pastors that are here to shed light on this. Yep. Um, I too, I'm, I'm interested in, in finding out because I, I think there are some information that we don't know. <laughs> yes, for real. Like like the way last last week was fully loaded. We it know was loaded. It's going to be fully loaded because these questions are things that we have to live with. These are things that we wondered about. You know, before you start pointing finger at people for what they're doing in their life, you better understand what's the plan and if they are in line exactly. with the plan. Before you start pointing at them. So the studio, the people in the audience, they are already filling out the pews because this is very interesting. You know, I got a lot of calls last week and people were very, very, they were very receptive, you know, because when you hear the word sex, you know, you think that it's the show was going to just be some regular talk about it. No, but it, it was clean. It was very informative. Yes. And I learned a lot from it. So I am looking forward to this as well. Yeah. 
Yep. Somebody called me. She like, oh my God, I got on the show. It was late, but I would be the first. She went back and played the whole thing. She said, oh my God. I laughed. She said, because those women, they lay it out. They did. They did. I'm going to yes. be walking around looking at everybody's nose and their hands. <laughs> and <laughs> the oh my. We won't I got someone. Not going to look at people's hands and their nose and their mouth. Please. Yes, yes. You know, I got someone. Yes. People do watch the show. Yes. Someone came uh, yesterday and they were telling me that, you know, a, a, a friend of ours watches the show and that whenever they don't see the show, they'll ask, oh, did Fasia come on? And then, you know, they would, they would try to say, they would come on and say, thank God, it's fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank God, it's fabulous. Yes. So, with no further ado, we have both of our guests in studio right now. So, I'm going to bring them to screen so we can get this party started. Because we don't want the thing to get too juicy and we are out of time. So exactly. at this time, we'll go ahead and bring Pastor Power in. Pastor Power, please go ahead and introduce yourself again. Good evening. My name is Pastor Veronica. Sometimes I'm known by Pastor V. I'm excited to be here today. It was a blessing last week, Friday. And um, I look forward to what we're going to cover today. I'm located in Columbus, Ohio. The ministry is El Shaddai Praise Tabernacle. And it's a blessing to join you all today. Thank you for having me. Thank you so Thank much, you Pastor for Power. And at this time, I'm going to go ahead and bring Pastor Esther and Moike into the studio. Please go Thank ahead. Thank you so yourself. much for having me once again. I'm very excited to be in this program this Friday. And um, I live here in Tampa, Florida. And I'm the pastor of the Tabernacle of Divine Glory Ministry right here in Tampa. And uh, I'm so delighted. As a matter of fact, most let me say 90 percent of my church members are online because the slogan in the church since mm -hmm. last week is don't be a tester <laughs> <laughs> that's right they kept telling one another don't be a tester i'm sure they all are excited that yeah. thank god is another fabulous friday yes 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 don't <laughs> be a tester she already showed the key on how to test with all touching so we're going to go and we're going to dive right into it. One of the questions and concern was, now that we know that the purpose of sex as God intended was for pleasure and procreation. Pastor Esther, we're going to start with you. What do you think about men who do have a lot of pleasure and procreate at the same time with so many different women? Well, it says uh, in the book of Jose that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. In the first place, when God created the first being, he said he made them man and woman. And as a result, a man will leave his father's house and be joined to his wife, and they too shall be one. And uh, when the woman who was caught in adultery was brought before Christ. Christ said, you, you want to lay stone, you want to throw your stone against this woman. Where is the man? In other words, adultery is when two people, two adults, either one is married and the other one is not married, two adults that either is married are capitulating which is against the word of God. We know Genesis, uh, Exodus 20, verse 7, spread it out. Among the Ten Commandments God gave, thou shalt mm -hmm. not commit adultery. So when a man who desires pleasure in another woman, and you are still married, you have a wife <clears throat> that you both agree for procreation, and yet you are not satisfied, you are going to another woman is because you are violating, unknown to you, you are violating Exodus 20, verse 7. You are an adulterous man or an adulterous woman. And everyone that commits adultery, even in the book of Galatians, chapter 5, 
But our Paul is from verse 19 showing us the works of the of the flesh. Fornication is mentioned, adultery is mentioned. So when you are not satisfied with the wife of that youth and you go about in the name of having pleasure and in having pleasure now you have become uh, uh, how do I put it? We have baby mamas. Uh, uh, we like our baby daddies. And you become baby daddies. My friend, you need to think twice. I had, I had one of my customers, you know, he believes in sleeping with every woman and every woman he sleeps with. They become pregnant. And I asked him, what do you think you are doing? You know why he replied to me? He said, Pastor, did God not say we should go forth be fruitful and multiply? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm helping to keep God's commandment. <laughs> you know, I'm telling you people's understanding. If God said, go forward, be fruitful and multiply, did God tell you that you are the only one that will multiply the earth? If God knew that only one man will multiply the earth, then there's no need of saving Noah, his wife, and his sons. They should be only Noah and the wife, then they will repopulate the earth. But God did not ask you to go and repopulate the earth. Now, you don't have enough means to take care of them. And a man who cannot fend for his household, the Bible says he's worse than an infidel. You see, a lot of people go into things they have no understanding. So that's why my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. If only you can be satisfied with your wife. If God gives you two or three children, you know that's God. That's God's way for you. You don't need to go about sleeping with other women in the name, you know, of you want to create in the name. Oh, you know, I've been eating uh, okra soup. Now I need to change to light soup. Okay. If you know you've been eating okra soup and the okra soup is, is getting bored, then do something to make the okra soup. Why don't you change your menu? I mean, change your styles and spike up your marriage. You don't need to go out there in the name that you want to eat obono soup because you are tired of okra soup. And then in trying to do that, you become pregnant. You know, there are some men, in fact, let them not hit you once to become pregnant. And then the lady now said, I'm not going to abort the child. So what do you do? Then you start having all the children that you cannot fend for, thereby violating the law of God. So I think it is a gross, a gross disobedience to the word of God. When you bring forth what you cannot take care of, especially in the quote for pleasure. Okay. That was Pastor Esther laying it out. Let's hear what Pastor Veronica has to say about the same question. Those men who just keep dropping it back to back everywhere in the name of pleasure and procreation. Um, I want to address the emotional aspect of it because I see this a lot with not only men, also with women. I will address both because you have men that are um, known to sleep around, don't protect themselves, and have babies. The issue is that after these children are born, there is a form of covering that a father is supposed to present to their child. But if you're sleeping from one woman to the next and getting each of these women pregnant, how do you now present that covering to that child? And then you also have women, it's not only men, you also have women that know that this particular man has a tendency to sleep with various women, no protection, and getting women pregnant. So now on the aspect of the women, if you know that this particular gentleman has a tendency to sleep with women, get them pregnant, why will you as a female put yourself in that predicament? And, you know, we see this a lot in our society where I think sometimes I'm addressing a female. Sometimes women don't sit to think about the men they are sleeping with. Because after you have sex with this man and it gets you pregnant, yes, you may think it is it's beautiful now. But what about the emotional need for that child? What about the time when a child needs that love of a father? when a child needs that covering, when a child wants to relate with their dad. And because this man is someone who has five or six or three or four baby mothers, he cannot be available to that particular child. So this question, it deals with both the men and the women. Any man or any woman that wants to go around either having sex, getting pregnant, yes. That five minutes of pleasure or however many minutes it may take, after that, that minutes of pleasure, the child is born. 
the child is going to begin to suffer because they don't have that solid foundation simply because the man did not sleep with you because of love. He slept with you because of lust. And because it's out of lust, that man does not have the mentality of a father to raise that child. So maybe every one month or he, he runs in and out of the child's life. That is not raising a child. And I think this is a, a topic that we need to really address, not only in the kingdom of God, society. Because too many children are being raised in dysfunctional homes simply because the father could not keep their legs together the women could not keep their legs together and these kids are being raised without love without the full foundation of the covering of a mother and a father god desire for us to replenish the earth god did not expect us to do it out of dysfunctional desires god desire for us to replenish the earth doesn't mean that we should allow our lust our lack of discipline in sex to just push our babies and when these babies come out they are suffering because maybe the mother is not there the father is not there there is chaos there is confusion simply because a grown adult were not able to discipline himself in the place of sex so when god wants us to replenish it means do it in his order husband and wife or even as Pastor Esther said the other time, even if you, you, you make a mistake and it happens, it doesn't mean you should keep on sleeping with men without protection, sleeping all around the place. No one mistake can be a lesson. But when that becomes a pattern in your life, then it means that you are also accountable for the dysfunction that your child is going to go through. God bless you. I remember God is going to hold us accountable. For as Sol Solomon said it, he said, he said, enjoy your youth. But remember, God is going to hold you accountable. Accountability. Yeah. But wasn't it the same Solomon man who had all them wives mm -hmm. and all the concubines? Mm -hmm. I know one thing the Bible said that if a man, a man can have more than one wife provided, he can provide for them. Just like Pastor V just said, if you can provide for them. So if a man is able to provide for five women and he gets all five women pregnant and he's taking care of them, is he in the plan of God? Is let he me carry on the let me, and the yeah, 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 Let me clarify, clarify something. something. Hold on. Okay. Uh, no. When it comes to believers, let me clarify that. Right. When it comes to believers, we are supposed to have one husband exactly. and, and one wife. wife. Absolutely. But in the Muslim religion, religion. Mm -hmm. in the Muslim religion, according to their doctrine, according yeah. to their religion, a man can have up to five wives or six, six. if he's able to, to provide for each of those wives. Right. But according to our beliefs, biblical beliefs, mm -hmm. we are supposed to have one wife and one husband. one husband. According to Solomon's time, you see, Solomon was in a totally different dispensation. Mm -hmm. than what we are now so when it comes to the bible sometimes some of the acts that men and women did in the bible they were in a different dispensation they did not for example encounter the holy spirit they did not have certain understanding that we have today as the bible says to whom much is given much is expected mm -hmm. so when you know what is right and you do something opposite you will be held accountable for that action. God bless you. Okay. Now, in, in support to what you just said, yes, it is true, uh, Sister Tete, that Solomon had 300 wives and 700 concubines. But remember, the same Solomon came back and wrote and told you that all is vanity. Mm -hmm. You see, all is vanity is what we should concentrate on, not on the mistakes of Solomon. Mm -hmm. It's like somebody coming to our dispensation said, because David has so many wives. My question is, are you David? Yeah. <laughs> oh, because, oh, because, you know, uh, uh, David keep Uriah and married Bathsheba. His wife, yeah. My question is, are you David? And are you Bathsheba? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? To every man, to every woman, each one has that destiny. But whether it's David, 
whether it's Solomon, what is the ending? And the Bible says, better is the ending of a thing than a thing the beginning. Yes. So what is their ending? You see that these two kings you just mentioned, none of them died having so much wives. They all repented and they all asked for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Remember, David came and wrote the book of Psalm 50, asking God for forgiveness. Solomon wrote the book of Proverbs, wrote Ecclesiastes, wrote Songs of Solomon, telling you what he has gone through, and the end of it is vanity. Now, why don't we take the vanity? It's vanity, which means, don't go there, my son. I have done it. Take wisdom. But we don't want to take wisdom. So, to me, if you are wrong and you are doing something in opposite, like Pastor Veronica said, God created them to be one man, one wife in the garden. Now, if you want to go about, you know, capitulating yourself, maybe because, because don't forget now, men that sleeps around or women that sleeps around, I forgot the name of the disease, they call it. They can't hold themselves. Now, don't, don't justify yourself with the Bible. Don't do that. Because if you look at the same Bible and you want to hold some of these men that did it, what was their end? I mean, what was their end? Did they die having it? If they didn't die having this woman around, you have no right also to justify your actions just by somebody says mistakes. Thank you. So one question that came up in the text, somebody said, the women are the weaker vessel. Why is it that the man will put the blame on the woman? The woman, the man is the leader. He should be making the rational decision on who is to be what? What do you make of that? When the Bible says the woman is a weaker vessel, excuse me, to, in what aspect? A woman is not a weaker vessel when it comes to truck driving. A man drives truck, now women also drive truck. I hope you know that. Mm -hmm. A man is an electrician, the woman also is an electrician. Mm -hmm. So what is the weaker vessel that the Bible is talking about? Because we are very quick to, you know, we know how to justify. Some men knows how to justify themselves with scriptures. Mm -hmm. And let's go back to the very beginning. When God created Adam and Eve in the book of Genesis, chapter 1 and chapter 2, even up to chapter 3, right? Just to belabor, not to belabor the, the time. We saw that God took the ribs of the man to make the woman. True. There are so many ways according to science, but God took one. Right. If God wanted the woman to be very weak, listen, God would have taken the bone from the feet. Then that would let me know that the man has the right to stamp on the woman. Now, if God wanted the woman to rule, then God would take the bone from the head. But you see, God is so wise, he took the rib from the side. Meaning that I will walk with you, you will walk with me. So where is the weaker vessel? Now we need to go back to that scripture and see what does Brother Paul mean by the woman are the weaker vessel. You know why we are weaker vessel? Because we are very soft. Yes, we are very weak because women are very emotional. Watch. Who saw Christ when he first rose from the grave? Woman. You know why? We have a soft spot. There's nothing anybody can do about it. That is how God has made the woman, to be a soft spot. And that's why God did not make the woman from the clay. It will be rugged. But he made us from already a finished product. So with me, we are the finest of the finest. So we will look more beautiful, more softer, more patient than the man. If you put a child down, guess who will be running to the hospital with the child? The mother, because we have this part of us, we, which you call it weak. I don't call it weak. I just call it the, 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 the humility part of the woman. Because no woman is weak. If you tell me a woman is weak, then I can show you that no woman is weak. A, a man drives a train, a woman also drives a train. So my question, where is the weakness? So the woman being a weaker vessel is not referring to strength. It's not referring to spirituality. But it's referring to a woman having a soft spot, a soft, very soft spot for God. If you put men here and put women, guess who is going to win past? The woman. Guess who, who saw Jesus first? The woman. Because we are so weak when it comes to decision, when it comes to emotion. Yes, but not in reasoning and not in wisdom. Thank you. That was a good clarification. So, um... 
listener, if you're listening, your question was just answered. So another part we want to touch on, what's about the men who sell the sperm for money? That's appropriation purpose. What's wrong with that? You know, um, I think last week we, when we started this program, we talked about, I don't know the, the other word to describe it, but I would just say the fake penis that women yeah, yeah, use yeah. sometimes. Mm -hmm. So last week, I remember Pastor Esther mentioned that there are some people that are that are sick, you know, mm -hmm. and they're not able to perform sex, mm -hmm. you know, in their marriage. So sometimes these uh, equipments can be used to help a couple yeah, marriage. that mm -hmm. is struggling. Um, and I, I will relate that to the question because there are some marriages, even I know some people where right. either the wife or the husband, they are not able to produce children mm -hmm. for, for numerous reasons, for numerous reasons. And um, for years, they are not able to produce children. Some of them don't want to follow the aspect of adopting a child. So as a couple, some of them decide based on uh, medical science or medical health, they decide as a couple to find either a man or a woman. For example, I, I work in hospital and I, I had a patient where um, a, a surrogate mother, yes. Um, and she, it was amazing because she was in the hospital. She was the one that delivered a baby, but the, the, the lady and her husband who paid her for that assignment. They were also in the hospital with the lady mm -hmm. to be a part of the process. So you see, sometimes in life, it depends on how you look at it. Um, if this man is doing this as a form of helping a couple that wants to have a child, they can have a child, they've tried every way and they're able to follow the medical aspect. And this gentleman wants to do it, it's one thing. But yes, you have those that are just like selling it like, water they just you know i think when you want to engage in something like that you should have a mission you should have a purpose it shouldn't be something you're just doing just to do some people really uh, participate in this particular act because they're they really feel bad for couples that may be in this particular predicament and they want to help those individuals so it's like the same when we speak about a surrogate mother um the the, the mother or the wife can have a child so the husband and wife come together and they choose a female. They go through all the procedures, the process and everything, and they have their baby. And the surrogate mother understand that this baby belongs to this particular couple. Mm -hmm. So like I said, if anyone wants to participate in that act, I think it should be from a place of understanding what you're doing, the purpose of it, and it should be done out of love, not just doing it just to do it because you're also right. bringing a destiny into yes. this world. That's God bless you. Wow. So let me let me ask um <clears throat> on this the surrogacy, I, I just the surrogacy um topic. So what if one is is doing it for just the money? You know, using it as a business. Okay. No. What is what is your take on that? You know to... we, we have some of I mean some of the the um shows that we watch you have people being a surrogate, but it is it's considered a business. Mm -hmm. you, you know, it's kind of like what I just mentioned earlier. Um, I think we, we kind of covered this last week about God. You know, we have our will and we have the will of God. You are absolutely right. A lot of people do do surrogacy as a form of business. You know, they go through other process. The nine months come, push out the baby to go to the next. Yes. There are people that do this out of business, but I'm just looking at a different aspect that even though you're a surrogate mother, there should be a form of connection, conviction that you're bringing a child into this world. Now, even if it is a business, I will use this aspect. If you consider it to be a business format in the, in the foundation of your business, is it to help women that are struggling? You know, is it like, I want to do this business because I feel the pain of women that can't have children. And because I've been graced with the ability to have healthy babies, I want to be, it could be actually, if you think about it, it could be a ministry. It could be a ministry. It could be something that you're doing to help build another female. So it's to me, when you, when you participate in this particular act, it's about the mindset 
Are you doing it just for money? You just you just want the money. You just want the money. Or are you doing it as a form of ministry? Are you doing it as a form of helping society? So if it's from that angle, maybe you, you're able to produce three kids in three years, you know, if you carry that grace. So I would say it's all about the individual and how they want to see themselves and what legacy or what impact they personally want to have upon this earth. So it's an individual um, decision according to that. Thank you. Do you know also that there is nothing that is new, like the Bible says, under the sun? You see, we call it surrogacy. If you look at the case of Abraham, yeah, Hagar, Sarah, and Hagar, hmm. Sarah felt she can bring forth, mm -hmm. and of God, Hagar became the surrogate mother, even though we know that the will of God was for Isaac to be the seed. Now, not just that, if you give me the book of Genesis 38, from verse 9 to verse 11, we saw the case of owner, Genesis 38, verse 9 to verse, I will just paraphrase. When his brother died, the, and the brother had no child, the father felt, how can his son just go? without having a seed upon the face of the earth. He now asked his brother, owner, to go into the wife and make her pregnant so that they can raise a seed for the family. There's nothing wrong. I, I'm in support, I'm in line with Pastor Veronica. There's nothing wrong in raising a seed for a family that cannot. But how we go about it is what is the problem. If God can kill Ona just for not helping the brother's wife to raise a seed. Listen, I'm coming with something. God killed him because whenever it's time for him to release the sperm, he would be wasted. Mm -hmm. So if God <laughs> can kill him for not helping his brother to raise a seed, listen. So what is wrong in a man or a woman helping another family to raise a seed? Because all that was written at four times, the Bible says, was written for our learning that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if we also we look at the case of Jacob, that when he left the Lebanon with Rachel and Leah, Rachel that he loved so much could not bring forth. What did she do? She gave the husband a handmaid. They started giving their husband their handmaid. There's nothing wrong in helping raise a seed for the family. Now, if we now come into our own generation, that we have people that does it. Listen, I don't want to get married to you, but I will help you to raise a seed. Helping to raise a seed, there's no way in the Bible, right, that I've studied that says it's a seed. You see the ones I've given you. But now, coming to, if they decide to make money out of it, they decide to make it for a living. I may not have a scripture to show if it's sin or if it's good. But I don't even want to go into that aspect. What I'm after is, if you want to help me to raise a seed for my home, I should be able to compensate you. Because that child is mine, not yours, even though you help me to raise the seed. I don't see anything wrong based on the scriptures that you're helping a man or a woman to raise the seed for their family. So if anybody will come around and said, oh, you know, they're making money. Well, guess what? If that's how you, you want to make money and you feel you can carry 10, 20 pregnancy and still be alive all the days of your life, well, that's to you. But I'm not looking at the aspect. Like I said, I'm looking at the will of God. And what is that will of God? You are happy to raise the seed for a family. 
Abraham did it. Jacob did it. So many, they did it. And when they finished, yes, it's true, the names of the maidens that helped raise the seed for either Rachel or Leah was mentioned. But at the end of the day, those children are the sons of Jacob. So are we not going to look at that and say, oh, you know, they have sinned? No. If I cannot give birth to a child and I feel, okay, there's somebody willing, but I have to pay, I will pay because I want a child. I want a child that I will leave my inheritance for. Oh, I'm, 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 uh, it's so unfortunate that maybe, you know, I'm, what do you call it? I'm, uh, what do you call the word? Uh, I'm barren. And the Bible said the barren shall bring forth. I may bring forth either through my womb or somebody else helping me to bring it forth. So I don't see that. And that's why I said I'm in line with Pastor. I don't see that as an offense or a sin. So how you go about it, like she said, is your choice. If you want to do it for free, God bless you. If you want to do it to make money, God bless you. But helping to raise a seat, no, it shouldn't be a problem. Thank you. That, that's a good one. And it's a deep one because a lot of times, a lot of things is really, we do take it out of context. And some people become so holy until they don't read the Bible to understand it. And they interpret these things as, oh, but this is what it is. She's not supposed to do it for money. But like you said, if somebody is doing something for me and I want to compensate them, I don't think it's wrong. Exactly. Yes. That's a good, that's a, that's a good way to, to, thanks for shedding light on that. So another question on that, uh, my couple asked, she said, as a Christian family, do you think surrogate is the right choice for a Christian family? I mean, we've just said it for a Christian family, right? Maybe she cannot bring forth. Probably the husband, you know, spam count is so low. He can bring forth and they need a child. Listen, I have even seen a mother become a surrogate for the child. I have seen a friend become a surrogate for a family. It all depends on mutual understanding. And can I, not to cut you off, um, let me hit the spiritual aspect of what you just, I think why she asked that. I knew of a couple, they've been married for years. Young couple, they've been married for years. Um, go to the doctor, doctor say everything is fine, but yet and still this couple couldn't have a child. Um, but the wife has a child, but in the marriage, there is no seed. Mm -hmm. So um, they reached out to me. And um, I think this was maybe six years or so into the relationship. The marriage, they reach out to me and we begin to pray. We begin to pray. And because I will, I will say it like this, I believe in this principle. In everything in life, you have the spiritual, you have the physical. Mm -hmm. Sometimes their ability to not to have a child, it could be a physical reason. Or it spiritual. could be a spiritual reason. Mm -hmm. So as a Christian, you have to prayerfully identify what is the root to what you're dealing with. This particular couple, um, after many years of trying and all, a, a lot of things was going on, they reached out to me and we began to pray. We it, it became basic an assignment. We prayed and we prayed and we prayed and we prayed and God came through and they got pregnant. Mm -hmm. Prior to them getting pregnant, as we were praying, we would have, both myself and the couple would have different revelations of things that was happening when I say spiritually, the natural man cannot understand, or it may not make sense. Exactly. Remember, the things of God will not make sense to mm -hmm. a regular person. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when we come to uh, barrenness or when we come to issues with childbirth, there could be a spiritual root or a physical root. So you have to prayerfully identify the root cause. And after so many years and them going to the doctors, all sort of things, you know, we prayed and God released, but it took warfare. It took intense 
consistent prayers to really get to the root. Because sometimes then it's not a physical thing. Sometimes you are not barren because of you. I mean, these people went to the doctor. The doctor said everything is perfect. But if everything is perfect with the husband, with the wife, what's the problem that we are not bringing forth? So as believers, we have to learn to identify the spiritual or the physical. In other words, prayerfully go to God and let him show you what is the root. If it's something physical, you deal with it. If it's something spiritual, you deal with it. Because if it's spiritual, no matter what you do, it's not going to work. So you have to identify the root cause and then launch out on your game plan to get your answers for your child. God bless you. That 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 was very 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 good the way you lay it out. Yeah. Uh, I hope that answer your question because most time we lean to these kind of questions, saying that if we are if, uh, if we are Christians, then we're supposed to wait on the time of God. Just like she said, you go back to the same God to find out where is this coming from. If it is physical or is it spiritual so there's another question here it says that uh when a man donate his prayer to help towards the purpose of procreation mm -hmm. he has to masturbate to do that and that is a sin how do you make of that yeah that 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 he wants to sell the spam is that what you're saying yes okay how he goes about selling the spam right whether he has to sleep with his wife or he masturbate, are you getting me? I mean, there are some things that I just don't think we need to, you know, like go into, into, how will I put it? Go into some things that really doesn't make sense. He's not masturbating because he's having pleasure. Okay, he's masturbating because he wants to help to raise the seed for somebody else. So if that is the case, like I said, I don't have a problem. You know, like some people felt that, it, as a matter of fact, before I even go to what I'm going to say, why Pastor Veronica was speaking, something crossed my mind. That is, when we talk about surrogate, remember in the case of surrogate, you don't sleep with a woman. No. It's your sperm that is done, that is used to fertilize the lady's egg, and then the lady carries your baby. Because I, I don't know of nowadays surrogate where the man sleeps with a woman. But in the olden days, they do. But you see, knowledge has increased to where you don't need to sleep with the man or with the woman. They take the woman's egg and take the man's sperm and then fertilize the eggs. And somebody help them to carry the pregnancy. Is that the same surrogate we are talking about? Because I really need to clarify this to know exactly, you know, what we are talking about tonight. Is that the surrogacy we are talking about? You know what, Fasia, I need you to look this up to see the different means of how to get that sperm. No, but I mean, surrogacy, everything is done medically. Yes. All right. But yes. how the man gives the sperm? Most time, from what I know, they he has to go out and do his thing and get it out. I don't know of any medical way that to go in and, and ask for it. I taught. <laughs> right. Because I know that the surrogacy, you can agree with me, of nowadays, right? Somebody can be in India, all right, and help you carry the pregnancy. Meanwhile, you have not set your eyes on the person. Yeah. All right. That's because your sperm that you donated here will be sent to fertilize the woman's egg. Then until two or three days before your delivery, then the parents of that child that is being carried will come and be there so that they can cut the umbilical cord, you know? Because these days, I I don't see surrogacy as, oh, you know, you have to go and sleep with the woman or you have to go and sleep with the man, you know, to become pregnant. But like I said, in the olden days, yes. So now if it be medically and the man feel, okay, I will need to masturbate myself. Remember, remember, he's not spilling it out. Hmm. Because That's a point. Oh, 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 uh -huh. that, is, that is the point. Oh, okay, 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 okay. 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 Spilling it out. But in this case, there is a purpose for it. Yes. Now, yes. I don't want to go and uh, probably commit adultery to get it. Now, I will masturbate myself, put the sperm in a cup, and donate it. 
Think even wisdom. How do you look, do you look at that as something bad? It's not. It's not spilling it out. It's different from somebody who just sit down and all they think about is just how to masturbate. You know what I mean? And just get pleasure and spill it and go and wash. That is different. You know, we need to really clarify that. That is very very different. Uh -huh. Thank you. And and not to cut you off, Pastor Esther. If you think about it. If this man is donating his sperm, how else would he get the sperm out of him? Exactly. Yeah. He got to, he, he has he to, to arouse like, himself. He can't go to he, you know, one, right? The I sperm is not just going to come out. No. He has to do something to get and himself to, to bring that thing out of him. Absolutely. It's not just going to fall out. So yeah. then at the end of the day, mm -hmm. it's not what you do. Is the intent? Yes, that's a good point. Yes, that's a good point. Yeah, that's right. That's a good point. So, uh, do chillier. That's the answer to your question. When you talk about the person who had do masturbation to get the sperm for the donation, it's not the act; it's the intent. That's right. And the intent of the heart is what God looks at. Mm -hmm. So, hey, that was a good one. Mm -hmm. That was a very, very good note. Uh, another person buttressed that point. Savannah, he said that Ona was very selfish, and so God slew him. And Judah, the father, had to go in and impregnate his son wife to oh, be right. able to get her the pregnancy. So, so, so but but this is oh, this is so 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 nice because I'm telling you, that's how Christians can divide ourselves in the same kingdom mm -hmm. because yeah. people not understanding the intent of what somebody is doing and Absolutely. they judge it from you yeah. know that's what the bible just look at the whole thing and say don't judge mm -hmm. because you're not inside you don't know it you don't understand it if you didn't go to this person to ask them why they're doing what you wouldn't know you, you wouldn't know, know. so yeah. don't start judging it so Colker, what question are you speaking about that you say was not answered? If you're speaking about the sperm donation, they did answer it. They said that the intent of that man masturbating to get that sperm out is what we're looking at, not the act. Mm -hmm. So I don't know which question you're talking about, Miata Colker. If you're speaking about a surrogate mother, we they answered that already, that the intent of that was to help another woman bring life into her family. So if you remember what question exactly, please put the question up. We appreciate it. But this is, oh my goodness, this is deep. Very it deep. a yeah. lot of time. She said, whether the man masturbate, are you talking about once the man masturbate, that sin. You see what we, I'm talking about? Let about me let me clarify men? something. Let me clarify something. I want you to look at two two men. I actually have a friend, a male friend that about to get married. This guy is addicted to masturbation, and I'm currently counseling him because he was like he calls me V. He said V, I'm so afraid that for so many years I've been masturbating. And now I'm getting ready to get married. And I know before I masturbate, I watch all these pornos and it gets me going. Now I'm about to get married and my wife doesn't look like those models on these porn videos. This guy literally goes, I mean, he goes at it. He goes at it. And just like what Pastor Esther said, when, when a man is masturbating, the sperm is wasting. It's wasting wherever it is shooting the ass, right? But... If a woman and a, if, if a couple is struggling to have a child and this man has been gifted to do it, I want to ask the dear sister that's asking this question, how else, because according to the scripture, Pastor Esther, we've read scriptures that prove that both men and women have helped to produce babies mm -hmm. in their families, right? Mm -hmm. So if this man is helping their family to produce a child, and you need sperm, you need that fluids mm -hmm. to produce this child. Mm -hmm. What else? Maybe she might have an answer. What else can be used to bring the sperm out of the man if the man himself doesn't take it out? Maybe there are some doctors that are in the process of helping men in this particular field don't have to mask, use their hands or whatever mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Maybe they must set up machines. Who knows? We're in a very high class world. Yes. They may set up machines uh, probably where a man can connect the machine to his body. The sperm come out and it's good to go. It enters into the bottle. But like Pastor Esther said, it is wanting to just be shooting your sperm out because of that lust and that addiction Pleasure. and that mm -hmm. And it's a different thing to say, I need to contain this fluid to help a family produce their child. Absolutely. Totally different things. Very, and very. only God can help people to understand certain things. You really can argue with them. I don't believe in arguing when it comes to the things of God. No. You have to release people to allow them to be convicted by yes. the Holy Spirit. Pastor Veronica, the reason why people don't want to see things the way God sees things is because they are claiming that they are holier than God. Forgotten that God <laughs> can use an impossible thing to do an impossible task. Yes. Who, who would have believed on this earth? Who, by what imagination would one have believed that some things we read that God does, that God did it? After all, God told us, he said, you as a man of God, for instance, one of the qualifications is you cannot go out without a harlot, a prostitute. And he slept, yeah. But God told Jose, right, to go and marry a prostitute. That's true. So what are you going to do? You say, we should know that we should think outside the box because God, you can't cap God. You see, our whole letter down that attitude, we want to cap God, you know. Don't put it this way. Say, you say, he said, how did he put it? He said, he said, who by searching can find the Almighty? His ways are past finding. our understanding. You, you can't find God because who would after that God would just through the Holy Spirit, Mary became pregnant. Mm -hmm. Look at some of the impossible things that God does, but yet to us, to a mortal man, how can that be possible? It's because you need to bring yourself to the level of God. You don't find fault with God. So when you see things you don't understand, like we said, keep quiet. Stay at them, my church. Move back. Leave it alone. You don't know if God is the one involved. You don't even know. Who would have believed that a prosecutor, a man, an injurious man, will be the one that will turn around and write the, out of the 28 books of the New Testament he wrote for him? You see, if it's me, if I'm in that day, I tell you the truth. I will, I will make sure that he's stoned today. I will tell you that he's yeah. not a man of God. Because yeah. that is my reasoning. Yeah. You know, God does what he does. No, not only to him. All I know is that if the man is releasing it not for pleasure. Do you, okay, now, do you expect the man to come and sleep with his friend's wife? Or you expect the man to come and sleep with his... No. You see, God has so made it in such a way that it's a knowledge shall increase and we see knowledge increasing so we don't need any any more <laughs> rebecca to come and give his hand to step up. no we now have a way so that you know to stop these diseases from spreading all these things from spreading okay you know what you don't need to sleep with the woman just do this give me you give me we even have a bank for it if i'm right no sister yeah, that's we right. have a bank for it People yes. don't do it and go and keep it in the back because they know that God gave me this thing. It's active, but I'm not using it. You know what? Let me use it to help somebody else. That man with favor with God that you that is spilling it anyhow and not using it to raise a seed to populate the earth. That's my intake. So, Mieta, did you get that? Who can question the will of God and what he intends to do? She mentioned the story of the harlot that God said you go marry the prostitute. Now, if in our day, why would God, who is holy, say go marry a prostitute, marry which is a yes. woman that been sleeping around? But God does take <coughs> God's own time that man does not understand. So, and we can we cannot question him. We cannot question we cannot. that of God. So the will of that man who is masturbating for the sole intent of helping another family to bring God's plan into action is the intent that we are talking about. Mm -hmm. You're looking at the act, but look at the intent of the person who's doing it. Then you determine for yourself whether it's a sin or it is not a sin. Mm -hmm. That That's something that you got to know God personally 
to discuss with him and see where that person is coming from. That's right. Hopefully that help you understand where they're speaking from. So oh, we have cool. another question. Yes. This is this is mind filling. I mean, I am I am just I'm I'm just absorbing it. I'm I'm expunging it like like a sponge. Um Philip asked a question and this is a little off the subject. Yeah. But he says, "Good evening, pastors. Please provide me with the understanding of what Paul wrote below. He's talking about 1 Corinthians, Corinthians 14, verse 34 to 35. And 34 reads, women should remain silent in the churches. They are not allowed to speak, but must be in submission, as the law says, verse 35. If they want to inquire about something, they should ask their own husbands at home, for it is disgraceful for a woman to speak in the church. So can you shed light on that? Okay. I remember I got uh, this question last week. Absolutely. Yes, it's true. Are women called to speak in the church? Hmm. I would say yes. If you remember in the case of First Corinthians, the Corinthian church is one of the most troublesome church in all the earth. It's in Corinthian church, a brother was sleeping with his father's wife. It's in Corinthian church that they will have a lot of gossipers. It's in Corinthian church that they were doing a lot of atrocity. Now, but Paul came to put the church in order. When there is, anytime they're having a gathering, the women, you know how we women, we like to talk more than we are. Our mouth becomes typewriter. But Paul said, no, 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 no. That is not it. Women, be quiet, be quiet. Uh -uh. Hear the men out. You know what I'm talking about. We women, I mean, we like to be in control. Now, if you also look at Galatians 3.28, it said, Galatians 3.28, okay? The word of God says that there is no Jew, nor Gentile, nor Greek, nor slave, nor male, nor female, for you all are one in Christ. We know that, uh, that Apostle Paul's mission, mission was somehow dominated by men. But you can understand with me that today's church takes a different outlook. We see men and women are equal before God. A man has a role to play in God. A woman has a role to play in God. Listen. Now, if we go back to that first Corinthian, I think first Corinthian chapter uh, 11, uh, verse 3, it says, For I will have you know, no, is it? Yeah, it's, yeah, let me be sure. First Corinthian, it says, For I will have you know that the head of man is Christ. Listen, the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. Now, the next verse. Any woman praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonored his head. How does a woman, look at that word, any woman praying or prophesying. You don't pray and prophesy at home alone in the church. And you want to do religious activities. You are dishonoring your head. Verse 3 told us who is the head, the man. You know how women will come to church? We don't tell our husband, yes, sir. We don't call our husband, daddy. But we want to call the pastor, yes, sir. We want to address the pastor, daddy. No, you have to, first of all, honor your head before you can come and do religious activities. But our Paul says that, don't you see that if you neglect this, you are dishonoring your head. Likewise, a man. If you a man, you pray or prophesy. He use the same word, right? And you dishonor your head. Who is the head of the man? Christ. You dishonor your head because you the man, you don't take care of your home. Listen, you are a bully in the house, okay? But when you come to church, mm -hmm, you want everybody to respect you. You, you want to treat other women well. You want to open doors for them, but you cannot open the door for your wife. You dishonor Christ, your head. 
And he said in verse 14, he said, does not even nature teach you that if a woman have long hair, it is a glory. Why? Because our covering is visible. But if a man have longer, it is a shame because his head is not visible. What am I pointing out here? He said, pray or prophesying. So if the woman is to learn in silence, then what is the praying and prophesying that you have to do in the church? That's number one. Then number two, if you look at it, uh, uh, some people quote First Timothy chapter 2, you know, verse 11 to verse 15, I'll take verse 12. He says, I do not permit women to teach or to usurp authority over a man. Look at that word, usurp authority. Now, when you say you do not permit a woman to teach, aha, uh -huh, and I have a problem with that. Why do I have a problem? Because we're not seeing the book of Romans chapter 16. If you go with me to the book of Romans chapter 16, because remember, we look at this scripture, but not knowing the reason, the rationale behind the scripture. And no scripture is isolated. In Romans 16 verse 1, he said, I commend to you our sister Phoebe, a servant of the church at St. Uh, you know this name, my sister, I don't know how to pronounce it, too, as Central. Our sister Phoebe, a servant of the Lord. If she's a servant of the Lord, is she coming to preach to them deaf and dumb? Is she going to speak to those people dumb? She's going to open her mouth. So when you say that the Bible says, I permit not a woman to teach, or I permit not a woman to speak, they should learn in silence. So by what power will this sister Phoebe be able to address the church? Now, Paul didn't stop there. If you look at the whole chapter of Romans chapter 16, look at Junior. He also mentioned in verse 7, Junior. He said, Junior, even called her the foremost among the apostles, which means she's the greatest apostle in the church. In addition, several of Paul's other letters suggest the importance of women in the early church. Look at verse 12. It says, Salute Tephenia and Typhosa, who labored in the Lord. Salute the beloved Persis, which labor much. Now, Tephenia and Typhosa. Tephenia, if you look, go to your Hebrew dictionary, is a lady's name. They are all the servants of the Lord. Junior is an apostle of the Lord. If you now say women should keep quiet and learn in silence, have you also considered the scripture in the book of Acts, chapter 21, verse 19? Acts 21, verse 19. The Bible says that Philip has four daughters that are working for the Lord. Uh, uh, Philip has four daughters who are prophetesses. Now, how do you prophesy if you are quiet? Hmm. How do you prophesy, thus says the Lord? And we all know, in 1 Corinthians 11, where I came, a woman that prayed or prophesied, that will prophesy is, you see what we are doing now? We are prophesying. We are preaching the word of God. That's the word prophecy. We are prophesying. It's the Hebrew word meaning we are preaching. Not, but in the case of Philip and his four daughters, they are actually prophetesses. Then where will you put Isaiah's wife? How is she going to prophesy in the church if women are to be dumb, dumb in the church? The reason why I see men are twisting the scriptures is because some men are very, very afraid of the women. Inferiority complex, because we know, like we said, women are weaker vessels. And when God wants to use somebody, guess what? He used the woman whose heart is, is mellow. And we all know, you can bear with me, that women's hearts are very mellow. They get easily to go. It, okay, we are looking at all the New Testament, women that are mentioned. Let's not even forget the Old Testament. What about the case of Deborah? Does that mean there are no men after the death of Joshua? Why would God raise Deborah to judge Israel for 40 good years? It's not only women that goes to him or her for counsel. Both men and women. And she has a husband. My husband preached a lesson, one powerful lesson during the Mother's Day. And that lesson really opened my eyes. Showing us the, the, the powerful 
powerful effect of uh, Deborah in Israel. She will sit under the tree and all Israel will come to be judged. Then if the scripture means women should not speak, if the scripture means only men, only men, then women, that means we are most miserable. Because I know that uh, Romans 8, 14 says, as many that are led by the Spirit of God, he said, they are they the sons of God. God. Yeah. You are a son. I am a son. There are no daughters of God. We all are the sons of God. And remember, he said to us that when he was ascending on high, he gave gift to men. Mm -hmm. And what are the, who are the men? Who are the men? If you, I'm sorry. If you look at First Corinthians 12, verse 7, listen to, 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 uh, to, to the statement of every man. Look at in First Corinthians 12, verse 7. Every man, as in every male and female, right, are to profit with the gift God gave them. I don't know who asked the question. Is that not what your Bible says? He said, Holy Spirit is given to every man to profit with that. So who are the every man? Is it only men that have the Holy Spirit? Don't women also have the Holy Spirit? Okay, maybe you will tell me that women have Holy Spirit. Yeah, we do. Did you hear that the Holy Spirit God gave us is only to just open our legs at night for you to make us have babies? Mm -hmm. Or maybe the Holy Spirit God gave us is just for us to cook food for you? God gave us the Holy Spirit that we may be profitable in the house of God. And Amen. that's what Christ said in Ephesians chapter 4, that while he was ascending on high, he gave gift to men. Because men are already given the spirit to profit with that. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some pastors, some evangelists, some teachers for the perfecting and edification of the saints of God. So when people are jumped to want to condemn women, I will pray that please go back again. Go back again and search the scripture. And see what does God mean. Because no scripture stands alone. No scripture is ever isolated. Women are not called to be just dumb, dumb in the church. Okay, if you talk about women should learn silent, when they reach them, they, have, they will ask their husband, please, whoever asks the question, what about if the woman is not married? Hmm. Who mm. is she going to ask the question from? Exactly. Mm. That's a good point. Who, who is she going to ask the question from? And then, Pastor Veronica, don't you think we are, that means, I don't know, what is wrong with us? <laughs> I, 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 me, right? Because we have to be dumb, dumb. Then why is God raising women? Which in the prophecy of God, do you know that women are going to come up at the close of this age to propagate this gospel of the kingdom? So nobody should put any woman on that, on that bondage that God did not put there. If you, a woman, know you have the gift of God, you better come out there and let God use you. And if it belongs to a ministry Amen. where women have been tied and put under, listen, God is no respecter of any a person. Yep. If God knows, I'm talking from my own example, which I know Professor uh, uh, Titian will understand. You see, when there's, your life is filled with the Holy Spirit and God has an assignment for you and somebody tried to put you here, listen, it's just a matter of time. God is going to push them out of the way. Just a matter of you time. To yes. establish. So the reason why many churches don't allow women to function is because of inferiority complex. They know when a woman takes over, I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit will fall. When I mean fall, it will fall down. I don't know how God does it. I don't know how God did it, but I give him the praise for it. So Amen. women learning silent is not that women should be dumb, dumb in the church. So if, are you telling me like the Holy Spirit is telling you, get up, speak, I am coming. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is that what you're going to be doing? Oh, because oh, I don't want to get offended. I don't, want to, I don't want them to get, well, get offended. I will obey God. I will obey God than to disobey God and reverence man. That's my intake. Thank you. Pastor V? <clears throat> I just want to just kind of, I think what this boils down to, because I have the 
female perspective and I also have the male perspective. And I want to make this point that um, if we're not careful, the devil will actually succeed in this area. A lot of times when God has raised a woman to do his work, the devil loves to sow the seed of discord mm -hmm. between the wife and the husband. Mm -hmm. And what happens is that Satan begins to portray the wife um, before the husband as someone that is controlling or someone that wants to be in charge. And these are all false images. And a lot of pastors worldwide may be silent on this, but there are a lot of women in ministry that are struggling, not mm -hmm. because they are not called, but the devil has brought a seed of discord into the relationship that, that wants the man to feel he's less of a man because mm -hmm. God is using the wife. Wife. I say this, it goes back to 1 Corinthians 11, verse 3. It mm -hmm. says that, but I will have you to know that the, the head of every man is Christ. So That's we're right. breaking the order. Mm -hmm. Christ is the head. Mm -hmm. Then it says, the head of every woman is a man. Mm -hmm. So this is where the wisdom of a woman comes in because we know that no matter how anointed, no matter how powerful you are, Every woman, especially in marriage, your husband is the head. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter his education level. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter his ability financially. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter who he is because at the end of the day, nobody forced you to marry this man. So the title of a head, whether the man's a drunk or whether the man is jobless, you chose this man as your husband. So the man is always the head of the woman. We can't break the scriptures because of our society. But with that being said, every woman that is called, and it doesn't have to be pulpit ministry. Every woman has an assignment. It may not be to stand in the pulpit and preach, mm -hmm. but every woman must learn to be submissive and yield to her husband. Mm -hmm. Yielding to your husband or being submissive to your husband is not a sign of weakness. It's actually a sign of a godly character. But you cannot submit to that man by your own strength. Mm -hmm. You will only submit to your husband by the help of the Holy Spirit. Because as Pastor Esther said, there are some men. If you look at them in your physical eyes, you will say, there is no way I will submit to this man. But ask yourself, what is the scripture saying? Mm -hmm. So concerning women preaching in the church and all these things, sometimes these are seeds of discord that the devil has sown because it's a beautiful thing when a man knows his assignment in the church the woman knows her assignment in the church and they come together as a team yes. to build the kingdom of god so what the devil does he begins to sow a seed no she's a wife she's anointed she's this she's that then the man become disgruntled the man becomes angry when you leave from the church you go home there is warfare so the moral of the story is all of these things. We need the help of the Holy Spirit. Pastor Veronica, so, yes. sorry, I didn't mean to cut you. The reason why there is a seed of discord is because, for instance, if you, the man, you know she's already a pastor, right? You came, you married her. You know she has a calling. Why all of a sudden? You started becoming envious, and you feel the woman is not this. Then you want to stop the woman from doing his religious activities. Then you want to find out that, oh, you are you are the head. God never took headship away from you. Neither did God take his calling also away from the woman that he has called. You see, we, we really need to really define this, because this is really becoming a problem in our immense in our society is really becoming a very big issue. I have seen a man just because the wife is being invited to preach in so many congregations, so many churches, right? Became envious and he allowed the devil to use that envy to destroy him. Then he started sleeping with all the sisters in the church. Like I said, trust me, God is no respecter of anybody. If everybody can just learn to maintain their lane. When we are in the church, yeah, maintain your lane. The woman is there. That does not mean you are not the head at home. 
But when you come to the work of God, so what are you going to talk about, Deborah? Does she have a husband? She, the husband is always there with her. But guess what? He knows that when it comes to God, I'm not the one called, it's my wife. When it comes to God, allow your wife to do her God calling duty because she's not your servant, but she's answerable to God. Yeah. If, 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 if Lepidot, Deborah's husband, could sit by the wife, why don't you also sit by the woman and help her become the woman of God that God has called her to be? Rather than putting scriptures to your own damnation. So I'm just sorry, I just need to keep that in. Amen. Pastor V, back yes. to you. No, I mean, you know what, where we're saying is all in line. I, I will say this again. If everybody understand who they are, it's like a corporation. If you know your role as the manager, you know your role as assistant manager, there will be no chaos in the home or in the company. So it goes back to what we're saying That's that right. in everybody in a home, or in a marriage or in ministry needs to understand their role. Because if a husband, the Bible says, look at what it says in 1 Corinthians 11, verse three. It says, and God is the head of the man. Mm -hmm. So ask yourself this question. If God is the head of the man and you, the man is submitted to your God and your God is calling his daughter, which is your wife, to mm -hmm. do the work of God, why would you fight against your God that is also raising your wife to do his work? Good so you point. see, it's all about understanding our roles yeah. in this kingdom. That's it's right. all about respect. It's all about honor and knowing what role you play in your home and out of your home and in the pulpit. When these roles can actually be defined and really apply to each of our individual lives, all this confusion, women should preach, women shouldn't preach, all these things will stop. Because when it comes to the Holy Spirit, there is no gender. Mm -mm. Even the Holy Spirit can use a rock uh, to yeah. do what he wants to do. There is no gender. So we just have to allow ourselves to understand our role and be sensitive to the devices of the enemy. Because if we're not, we will be fighting. I'm the, why are you preaching? You are not preaching. Meanwhile, souls are dying. The devil has penetrated the home because we're busy fighting for position. Mm. We are not fighting for position. We are occupying our assignments through the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Wow. Thank Amen. you so much. Oh my Ooh. goodness. I love what you said, yeah. Pastor Veronica. The, the person who asked that question. question said, thank you so much, pastors. <laughs> I love what you said when you said, according to the Holy Spirit, when it comes to the Holy Spirit, there is no gender. At all. Not at all. No male, no female. Yes. So, Philip, I hope this answers your questions. Well, oh another goodness. impactful evening. Yes. Oh, no, man. <laughs> I, I well, wish there was no time, time we didn't have to go but nowhere. Like, but what, just here. Yes. <sighs> mm. Pastor Veronica, Pastor Esther, look. The audience want you again, but they forget to know that the next topic say men, understanding of sex. They want you to come again as men. This is not fair. <laughs> Uh, you oh. know, uh, uh, well, that would be another time, right, Pastor Veronica? I, yeah, yeah, another no. time. <laughs> they don't want to turn your agenda over so you can be here again. Like, they don't want to let you go. But bring, we are bring, bring so, so grateful. So, yes, so thankful for the light you have shared these last two weeks. Amen. It is amazing the kind of things we think about with all the proper understanding. That's where our problem can come from. Yeah. So I'm so thankful that you shared a lot of light today on the simple things because simple is not simple. One may be simple to one, may be very difficult for another. That's and true. until that knowledge and wisdom is come, mm -mm, you are in the dark. And that's mm -hmm. why we perish for that mm -hmm. lack of knowledge. knowledge. But you have really shared light on some deep, deep things today. Thank you so much. Thank you, audience. I can't even begin to call the names because today numbers just too much. From the Facebook to the YouTube, YouTube just, and, I'm yes. just going to say thank you to all the listeners tonight. 
Thank you to all the viewers tonight. Hopefully your questions were answered and set your heart at ease and gave you more power because mm -hmm. knowledge is power. Indeed, so a lot of amen coming through for everything you have done tonight. Next week is men understanding of sex. Ooh, we will have the brothers on and they will be telling us how they understand this whole sex business. So we will see what they say. Now, if it get really tight, we'll be sending you some back to call like, Pastor V, you have to come. <laughs> this man saying something here we don't understand. <laughs> so you can come and help us out. And Pastor Esther, we thank you so much. Amen. We know you'll be watching the show to see all the other high points because the men are going to come and they're going to say they're going to say. But surely they will need corrections because the men that are coming, they're not pastors. They are men in their man understanding. That's how we want it. Men who think what sex is. So we know we still need help. Because they will come to say some things here that will be serious. <laughs> you to come help them clarify it. So we want to say thank you tonight. Thank you to all the viewers. And Amen. we look forward to next week. Amen. To hear what the men got to say for this. Thank you all so right. much. Thank Pastor you. Pastor Esther, you. Pastor thank Veronica. You. Thank, you. Thank, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. God bless you. God, God bless right. you. God bless you. Bye -bye. Have Bye -bye. a good evening. Yeah, you too. Wow. Wow. Oh, evening. Oh, my goodness. Yep. Woo -wee. Well, thank God. It's, it's fabulous. fabulous. Yes. Have a good evening, listeners. Good night to and all. And let's continue to praise God for everything that he do for us. Good, good night, night to all my viewers. And amen is the word. Thank God it's fabulous. It's amen tonight. <laughs> <laughs> good night, everyone. Good night.